Welcome back to Knitting School. The skills I'm going to teach in today's video are how to purl, how to tell the difference between the right side and the wrong side of the fabric, and how to tell if you're supposed to purl across a row or if you're supposed to knit across the row if you are doing what's called stockinette stitch. For supplies you will need scissors, five millimeter straight needles, 20 yards of worsted weight yarn, and a yarn needle, also known as a tapestry needle. For this, we are gonna cast on 10 stitches, and I'm gonna use the long tail cast on method. If you are unfamiliar with this, or if you are just learning how to knit, I highly recommend clicking on this video that goes over these skills in depth. So again, tail coming toward us, working yarn away. And the first time you do it, you're gonna get two. So it's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And once again, I'm doing this so fast because I assume you already know how it works. So the first row, we are gonna do it exactly like we would if we were knitting the garter stitch fabric, okay? So we're gonna do, just knit every stitch. Once again, yarn is on the back. We go above the bump. The bump I'm talking about is right here. We go in between the two, trap it, push it through, slide it off. And we're gonna just knit across all of those stitches until we get to the end. All right, so there we go. Now we are going to do what we've done before where we make sure that the working yarn, and that's the yarn attached to the ball, that is on the right hand side, the tail we ignore, and if we were doing the garter stitch, we would just go in like before from behind with the working yarn in the back. That's not what we're gonna do for this one. Instead, we are going to purl across this row. And to do that, we're gonna hold this needle horizontally. And then with the needle in my right hand, I'm going to drape the working yarn over top. That is a very easy step to forget. So make sure before you do anything else, you have this draped like so. And instead of going in from behind, we are gonna go in from the front. So like this, and I'm gonna hold it like so. So it's like making a little cross here, okay? What I will then do is take my working yarn and only around this needle, I'm going to wrap it counterclockwise or from right to left, if you don't know about analog clocks. So I just wrap it like that and then I'm going to pull it down. It's really important to tension it like that, otherwise this process is gonna be harder than it needs to be, okay? So I pull it down and I trap it with my thumb. Then I'm gonna slide this over a little bit, you can see, so it's like closer to the edge. And I'm gonna slide that needle down. And then I'm gonna just take it from front to back and slide this off. Okay, I know it's very hard to see in the video, so I'm gonna show you all again. We go not from behind, but in the front. We wrap this around and pull it down and trap it. And then you can see there's this gap right here. That's what I'm kind of going through. We just travel from front to back through that gap. So I'm gonna get front to back through that gap and then slide it off. And we slide those down a bit and continue. So 
in the front, wrap it from right to left, trap that down with our thumb, front to back, through that gap, slide it off, just like that. That is the way it's done. All right, now purling, I would say, is a little trickier to get the hang of than knitting. Maybe because it's harder to see what's going on. So don't get discouraged if it doesn't make sense immediately. Just keep working with it until you know you're doing it exactly right. So I'm gonna just keep doing this all the way across until I get to our last stitch here. And then, I, I mean, I, I do the exact same thing again. And then to tighten this up, I'm gonna take the yarn from front to back like this and just pull a little bit on the yarn, okay? Then I'm gonna take it and move this over to the left and knit across this row because stockinette stitch, you knit the first row, then you purl the second, then you knit the third, purl the fourth, knit the fifth, etc., etc. Basically, on the odd number rows, you knit, on the even number rows, you purl. There is, however, an easier way to tell which row you're supposed to be on. And now that we have a little bit of the fabric built up, I want to show you what that is. So, say for instance, you set this down. You forget what row you're supposed to do, and then you pick back up, you're like, okay, I don't know if this is supposed to be a knit row or if this is supposed to be a purl row. Here's how you can tell the difference. Like I said in the last video, the yarn is always going to be on the right side, and the yarn that I'm talking about is not the tail, because we ignore the tail. It's the yarn attached to the ball. is going to be on the right just by the tip of the needle, okay? So it's not gonna be like this, because then our needle is pointing to the left and the yarn is on the left here. We don't want that. We wanna make sure the needle is pointing to the right, the yarn is on the right-hand side. So the first step is orienting it like that. The second step is looking at the fabric that we can see here. And the fabric looks like a bunch of little V's. You can see that. There's like a V right here, a V right here. That is the right side of the fabric. You may have sweaters, I'm, I don't even say, you will have sweaters that look like this um, because this is a very, very common stitch. Even if you look really, really closely at a knit garment, you're gonna see these tiny little V's because it's just such a common fabric that's created. So. Again, yarn is on the right, the V's are facing toward me. That way we know I have to knit across this row. So I hold it like this. The yarn is in the back or behind the needle because you can see the needles here, the yarn's back there. I go from behind, I'm above that bump and then I wrap it behind and between, I trap it push it through that hole and I slide through. I just knit, oops, I knit across this row all the way to the end. All right, so last stitch here and we're good. So now I have to turn it over so that it's pointing to the right and the yarn is on the right. So that's the first step of getting it in position. Now we look at the fabric that's being created here. This is the wrong side of the fabric. So it's all these bumps. So again, to show the difference, right side is V's, the wrong side is the bumps. And what we're gonna do is we see yarns on the right, the bumps are facing me, that means it is time to purl across this row. So again, I drape the yarn in front. I hold this horizontally and I take my needle on the right. I go in from the front vertically. 
and I wrap it around from right to left. I trap it. I go from front to back. I slide it off. And I purl across that row. All the way across. Okay? I'm gonna continue this process of knitting on the right side and purling on the wrong side until the fabric is square. And then we are going to bind off. And I'm gonna show you what that will look like. So I will see you again once I have my square fabric. Okay, so I just got it to the point where it's square and you can tell because you fold it over and voila, this matches up with that. So we're ready to bind off. And try to make sure that you do this on a knit side row because we are going to bind off knit wise. That would be how this is called. So the bind off is the same as what we had done in the basics video where you knit the first two stitches a little bit looser than before. And then you take the stitch on the right and pass it over the stitch on the left. And then you knit the next one right over left. And then the next one and so on until you are at the last stitch. I pass it over. Now I only have one left. So I pull that up and then cut it, feed it through the loop and pull it tighter. And I'm going to weave in the ends like before. So again, to save some time, if you need to see how to do that, <clears throat> just watch the first video, it'll show you. But we are gonna go in and out. The only thing that I'll say with this one is make sure to leave the tail on the wrong side. So I just came through on the right side, I'm gonna go back to the other side where it looks kind of bumpy. And here I'm gonna cut it off. And then I'll do the same thing with the tail from when we had started. So a couple things before I'm all finished. Um, this is a finished swatch, but I wanna mention this fabric that is created when you knit on the right side and you purl on the wrong side is called the stockinette stitch. And it's the most common that you'll see in knitwear patterns. So it's a very important stitch to know. And like I said, the side that has the V's facing you, that's very smooth. This is the right side of the fabric and the side that's all wavy that is the wrong side. And to show you a comparison, this is, like I said, if you knit on one side and purl on the other, this is when you knit every single stitch. So this looks the same on either side, whereas this one looks like the V's on one side and a little wavy on the other. And some people think there's a little bit of similarity to what the garter stitch looks like versus the back of the stockinette stitch, but you can see this is a little more compressed. You can also tell the stockinette stitch curls a lot, which is kind of annoying to work with. Those are a couple of the differences between those two kinds of fabric. Okay, hopefully this video was helpful to you and thank you so much for watching. What's your name, girlfriend? What's your name? What's your name, girlfriend? What's your name? 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 What's your name?